Getting a light meter sounds like a normal step when you want to have consistent results with your Super 8 or 16mm camera. But what meter should you get? Why would you get a meter when your camera has an internal one? If we talk about Super 8 cameras, we're talking about devices that are at least 4 years old. The meters inside most of those cameras are not accurate anymore. Many times, the meters took mercury batteries that are no longer in the market, and even when you can find replacements, in many cases the voltage those batteries put out is not the same as the original one. Some light meters were manufactured using photocells made of selenium. They were great because they didn't need a battery. Well, 50 years later, the selenium depleted and the meters are no longer accurate. Some of those meters can be brought back to life by a technician, but in some cases, they are just impossible to adjust. In-camera meters can be compared to a modern meter to determine if they are accurate or not. Another common problem with Super 8 cameras is the internal meters were created to measure ISO sensitivities that were available before, but that don't exist anymore. Several cameras are limited to ISOs like 100 or 160, because 250D and 500T didn't exist at the time. If we talk about 16mm cameras, only a handful of them have an internal meter, and they face the same issues I described before. When it comes to handheld meters, there are tons of options in the market. Seconic has dominated the industry for years. It's not a big market, so we have to be thankful they continue to develop new models and technology. There are two types of light meters, incident and reflected. Incident meters are the ones that have that white bubble made of plastic. It is called lumisphere, and it catches the light coming from a 180 degree area. There is a flat accessory that replaces the lumisphere. That flat accessory can take more accurate measurements of paintings, documents, or other flat surfaces. Incident meters measure the amount of light that falls in certain area. These meters are not fooled by the brightness of the objects in the scene. They are accurate, but as you can imagine, you have to put the light meter in the spot where you want to measure the light. If you want to take a measurement of the sky, a plane, a mountain, a boat far away from you, or if you want to take a measurement of an object that emits light, like the moon, a neon sign, a lamp, or a mirror for example, using a reflected meter is a better idea. A reflected meter allows you to measure light at the distance. It uses the same principle as the incident meter to measure light, but this kind of meter reacts to the brightness of the objects in the scene. If you point the meter to snow on a bright day, the whiteness of the snow is going to fool it. The meter will assume the image is way too bright and it's going to tell you to underexpose the image. On the contrary, if you point the meter towards a piece of black velvet under the same light conditions, the meter will think it's way too dark and it will tell you to overexpose the image. In the end, the reflected meter is always trying to make everything middle gray. If you are trying to expose an image with a reflected meter, you have to take the measurements from the camera position. As you can see, the meter inside your camera is a reflected meter. And as we just learned, the meter can be easily fooled. Therefore, an external meter can deliver better results. The incident meter doesn't care about the brightness of the objects. But as I mentioned before, there are going to be cases when you cannot physically put the meter in the spot you want to measure. So, which meter should you buy? Well, it depends on your budget and the stuff you like to shoot. The most affordable meters are the ones that have a needle and a lot of numbers and dials. I find those difficult to use. Personally, I would not use one of those. I love the amount of information and options I get from my digital meter. 
The Siconic L308U is also an affordable option. Probably cheap is a better word, because the plastic feels cheap. The meter is natively an incident meter, but an accessory can convert it into reflected meter. You just point the meter towards an area and take a measurement. You don't exactly know what you are measuring. I borrowed this meter from a friend and I was excited when I saw the Cine mode. The L308 has a good number of frame rates and they are usable. It doesn't have as many options as other expensive models, but this is an entry-level meter. What is limited are the shutter angles. The options are 45, 90, 180, 270 and 360 degrees. Yes, 360 degrees. I don't know how they decided to use those numbers, but they are not really helpful. The Seconic L358 is an old but modern incident meter. As most Seconic meters, they are primarily intended to be used in still photography. The 358 has a lot of options for flash photography, but again, it is limited for movies. It has a good number of usable frame rates, but if you are using something else than 180 degrees on the shutter angle, things are not exactly friendly again. You have to compensate using ISO and stuff like that if you want to use another number. You can always use shutter speeds. I have a video where I explain how to convert shutter angles to shutter speeds. The L308 and the 358 can measure fall, halves and thirds of a stop. Thirds are very helpful when you work with movie cameras. You can make any meter work that way. But when you have shutter angles on your meter, things are super smooth. Another common meter that I could borrow for this quick comparison is the Minolta Autometer 4F. As the other meters, the Minolta was created to be used primarily in still photography. It also has a cine mode, but it is, as in the other cases, limited. The 4F is an incident meter natively. There is an accessory that can be mounted to convert the meter onto a reflected meter. Again, you don't know exactly what you are measuring. The Minolta is older than the other meters I mentioned before, and this is a meter I would not like to have. It can only display results in full and half stops. This is very limiting, and it makes the 4F not a good candidate for cinematography. If you have a professional camera that runs at 24 frames per second and that has a shutter angle of 180 degrees, it would work perfectly. If you have something else, I would avoid this meter. The last meter I'm going to mention here is the Seconic L558 Cine. As you can imagine, this is a more advanced meter that was intended to be used with moving images. It has an incident and reflected mode. When you use the reflected option, you can actually see what you are measuring in a very specific way. The meter can read a 1 degree area, which makes it very useful when you want to measure small spots. This model also has a lot of frame rates and shutter angles. I mean, a lot. I can use pretty much any camera, film or digital with this meter. Since this is the Cine version of the 558, the meter is also great for still photography with or without flash. There are newer versions of the Seconic meters like the 750i DR and the last generation iPhone-like meters. The iPhone-like meters are very cool, extremely accurate and have tons of options. In my case, I don't like the screen and I don't feel like I have to replace my meter. If you know how to use a light meter, any meter will work fine. I tested the four meters one next to another in different situations. Do you know what was the result? Exactly the same number. A more expensive meter has more options if you need them. But as usual, it is better knowing how to use a tool properly than having the most expensive ones. 
When you use the internal meter of the camera, the photo cell measures the amount of light that enters through the lens. When you use a handheld meter, you have to consider factors like if the lens is marked on T-stops, and if there is a prism inside the camera still in some light. You also have to enter the correct frame rate and shutter angle on the meter. It took me years to understand how to use a light meter properly, but it helped me to improve my still photography and cinematography skills a lot. I love my Seconic L558 Cine. I bought it 15 years ago used for $200, and I could sell it now for $500. They are a good investment too. This meter has taught me a lot. I use it to take pictures and I use it with my movie cameras. I can use the same meter with digital and film cameras. I own a good amount of motion picture cameras. For that reason, a meter that has tons of frame rates and shutter angles makes sense to me. If you don't use a meter professionally or if you don't have to use several cameras, a simple meter like the 308 can be a good option for you. Thanks for watching the Cinematography Lab.